So thank you so much for, for making, the, making the time. It's a big pleasure to talk to you and, and, and it's an really hear your story. So for people that don't know me, let me introduce myself, all right? I, I'm Marcos Rossini. I was born um, without arms and legs with a very rare syndrome that is called von Hart syndrome. And when I was born, the medicals told to my family that I would live only 30 years of life, just that, because of that syndrome. But my family always treat me like a normal child and they raised me as a true champion. You know, you're gonna fight, you're gonna win and you're gonna lose sometimes, like anybody. So uh, I never uh, let that my physical limitation stop me to dreaming, to achieving and to uh, attracting the things that I wanted for me and my life, all right? So today, I am graduate law school. I am a father of two sons. I'm a trainer and a motivational speaker, international motivational speaker. And I do surfing. I do skateboarding. I do scuba diving. I play drums on Carnival Parade in Brazil for mm. 21 years. I do singing. I love to sing. I'm a singer too. I saw your Frank Sinatra, the, the show that you got, you did. That was yes. amazing. I love the jazz and Sinatra. And so I don't have nothing and I do everything. And people have everything and most of them don't do nothing. So why is that? Mm. Because happiness is a choice. Mm. So you need to choose wisely. What do you want for your life? And since I was, I was young, I always searched for things that make me happy, that make my energy up. Always. Hmm. I, I didn't have thought about, uh, oh, my physical limitation. What can I do now? So no, I just used to think what I want to do now. What makes me that? energy you know that to be with my friends to play with the other kids because a kid is a kid even without one arm or two arms or legs or whatever they do just have, want to do you, have, do you have do you have brothers and sisters yes i have two and but they are like everybody said normal <laughs> yeah 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 so it was a surprise for my family because they did the ultra, ultrasound and the, that exam with seven months right. pregnancy, my mom. And the doctor said, listen, it's a boy. Oh, it's a perfect. It's here. You can see the arms and the legs. And well, it's a boy. He, he was right. But the rest, when I was born, the first thing that happened, the first thing that happened with us when we were born, what did the doctor uh, slap you for you to cry? Right. right. First thing that happened to me, the doctor fainted. Boom! Because he wasn't expecting that. So that's why I, I always cause it in the world, right? <laughs> Since I was a, a baby, and then I choose very wisely what I want for me, for mm -hmm. my life, and always to be in that state, mm -hmm. right? The perfect state does, is it's the primary, primary key here. You as a fighter, you know that you need to be on state when you need to enter. And you know, if you enter like, uh, yeah. I think I will win, maybe. No, you won't, right? Right, right. So I searched for all of this. I'm curious, your parents, you know, when uh, when you talk to them now as an adult, like, um, what did they tell you um, the first things that went through their minds, um, ha you know, having you born like that and the things, what did they, how did they, they talk to you about that? At the beginning, they didn't say nothing because, as I said, a kid is a kid. So right. they just... Uh, 
try to put my the focus on my mind for what I wanted to to achieve. Okay, so when I was like thirteen and the teenager or pre teenager, the things started to get a little worse because yeah. you want to talk to the girls. You need to, you know, and then my first attempt to talk to a girl, it was a disaster. Because I was in the, in, the, in the party on the afternoon and with 13, 14 years old. And I, I didn't have the power wheelchair yet. So mm. a friend helped me and we were at that party. And then I said, listen, <laughs> you, you will help me to talk to that girl beautiful girl on the dance floor all right i will help you and then he pushed my wheelchair to the girl and then he ran out and i said oh god what i do now i will speak or i will speak because i cannot <laughs> run away by myself <laughs> but the first five words that i said to the girl she said, get off. I want a full boy, not a half. And you, to hear that on your first attempt to talk to a girl, man, then I realized I'm different. Mm. <laughs> and when, sorry, when things like that happen in your life, if you don't be very aware and because you feel everything that you focus on, everything you focus, you feel. And that can be a true or not, because your brain doesn't know what is true or doesn't not. All right? So you need to focus on positive things. Because if something happened that is bad and you feel sad about that, and then you focus on what on that, and you oh, I'm not complete. I I, I will not. I, I'll never be able to complete someone. Oh, and then you start to feel bad and feel and feel and feel because everything you focus, you feel. Right. right. So I, I I have to change my focus. Otherwise, it will be a belief right. that will limit right. you in the future. When you have right. another opportunities so the first thing that happened i stayed in my home for one month without going out one month without going out and then i realized that i am perfect you know and if someone will love you they'll have to love you the way you are if you put your happiness in the hands of other people or other things, you will never be happy. Never. Everything depends on how we react to things in our life. So you need to be positive always. Then I understand that. And then I never had more problems uh, with girls. Well, the problems have changed. <laughs> right. So what was your what was your first your first oh, success? I think there's connection here on the Instagram. I, I lost you. Yeah, I lost you on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's it was, it, it was their, their plan, you know. So I think the battery the, my battery passed. So on my phone, ah, all right. like yeah. that, you know, since we had to put the microphone in my in my ear right. as well because I couldn't hear it. But uh, it's okay, okay. I think yeah, it's okay. We we tried. But. Uh, what was your first success for your first success? Like, what was your first, how did you kiss your, the, your first, your first girl? How was the, if you don't mind sharing that with me, what was the, yeah, as I remember like, that uh, my father taught me a, a, an exercise. <laughs> don't laugh at me. Listen, and then exercise and the, listen, the most powerful words in the world is I am, you know, I am. And if you say, I am lazy, I am shy, I am ugly, I am fat. Everything that you said I am, 
you attract for you, right? Yeah. And even if you don't are yet, you need to say things that you want to be. Yeah. Right. And so my my father said, "Listen, you need to repeat that in the front of the mirror every single day. It's like five minutes. Just write down. You can do this now. You are listening to us. This exercise. You can do this. You will write down five things that you are or you want to be. Okay. For example." I wrote, I am love, I am beautiful, I am rich, you know? And you need to say that in front of the mirror with energy, with the right state. Emotion. Okay? And then I started to do this. I started to do this every single day, every single day. And then the first party appears. <laughs> and I, I was again on the dance floor and dancing like hell. And then I saw a girl and I said, come on, let's do this. I am beautiful. I am love. I am passion. And you know, I, I was talking to myself in my head, right? So the, for not to be like a crazy guy. <laughs> and then I just went there and started to talk to her again with a smile on my face and not with that focus on what happened that was wrong right and then magic happened <laughs> so and when and the, the most important thing it is when you do something and that thing because you put some action right you put some action there and that action creates a result that result he it in create creates your uh beliefs about your project about whatever you want to do and then you said mm, i can do this and then you do more action more mm. results more results your beliefs go higher and then you do it again it's a cycle that never ends but you need to be very careful because when you do something and sometimes you know you don't put the right energy on and you, you do like, uh, okay, with, okay, I do like, uh, yeah, I'll try to do this. And then you put some action, but the results is going to be low. Okay. And then what happened to can your, you can you hear me? Well, I, know I can. Yes. You said, uh, what happens to your beliefs? Yeah. And your beliefs goes down decrease because oh the bad result it's a small result that i have because i didn't put all my energy up and did all the action that i had to do it then and then with the beliefs down you will do more or less action less action and then less results and then your your beliefs will be slower and then you are in the middle of a crisis or something or whatever so you need to be very careful because when you want something and when you need to, you want that plan or that, that goal and you do something, but the results is not so good as you plan it. You need to do it again. Mm. You never give up, never give up on your dreams and keep going, keep doing. And you need to uh, change the strategies change your state, but do it, do it. Action. Action. That's, I, I, I used this for all my life in all the things, because for a guy like me, it wasn't easy to be on a surfboard, right? And if I fall, yeah, then it's, it's a dangerous thing. You drown. You scuba right? diving. Right. So, so it's, but the secret of success is this. First of all, overcome your fears because the fear it can't change everything. Mm. Fear, it's a normal thing. 
all right? People said, oh, you are like a hero or, or fighters don't have fear. Or, uh, people uh, think, they, they, they think that we are like superheroes, but it's not true. The fear is a normal thing because your brain, that one million old brain was created to protect you, all right? So when you want something, you have a new goal, uh, uh, something that shows up in your life, the fear will show up too. So understand that. When fear appears, you have three choices. Mm. One, you run out. <laughs> Two, you freeze. It's like everybody's doing this on this time of, you know, the, the coronavirus and that right. thing. Right. Uh, or you fight. Right. Or you go there and do your best. Go in the direction of your fear. So when I have a project, when I have a goal, when I have a new mission, I understand. One, fear is part of the process. Two, go for it. Go against your fear. Fight. How? But how can I do this? And my students always say to me, oh, Marcos, my, my fear, it's bigger than me. <laughs> you know how to do this, how to overcome your fears. You just need to do little actions mm -hmm. day by day, mm -hmm. day by day. Not because oh, when you think about your dream, you, you think, oh, it's a big dream and you feel all that done. So no, you need to do little actions, little actions. You as a fighter, you train. Every day, a little, a little, hell, everybody <laughs> you train and you train and you train and you, for you to be well to the fight. Right. So all my projects, I need to do this, overcome my fear. You understand that is a part of the project. Right, right. You know, I, I, going back to your, you know, I just, I find it fascinating because, you know, you, you, you have your first success of, talking to the girl, you know, she gives you the time of the day. First you get rejected, you stay at home for one month, sad, and then you you become brave, you start to do the mental talk to yourself and you do it again and then they finally talk to you. Let's go I want to hear your the first the first time you got the 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 kiss, you know, from the girl, you know. Uh especially since you're Brazilian and I just I want I want to I want to if you don't mind sharing. to learn these strategies, right? <laughs> <laughs> the exact words that I said to her, I, I don't remember very well because, you know, it was like uh, the nervous and uh, I, right. I remember that I said something like, oh, it's, it's cold <laughs> or something. <laughs> and then uh, she said, but we were uh, it's like um, looking at each other for a, a long time on that. So... Uh, she smiled at me, I smiled back, and, and then I started to talk then, and, and she was tall. She was wow. tall. And I said, mm, how can I do this? And I said, listen, let's do something. Let's talk over there on that couch. <laughs> and then we went there, she sit down, and we started to talk again. And then I, I asked her, and I said, can I kiss you? And then she said, Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, but you are too far. Can you kiss me first? <laughs> and, and she smiled and then kisses me and boom. That's amazing. That's amazing. And you're like, yeah, you know, it's this state. Change your state with humor, with it's not nervous and. Uh, right. And you have, two, life. You, have two, you have two kids, right? You have two kids. Yes. Yes. I have two kids. One with 16 years old and 12. Wow. 16 and 12, amazing. Yes. I have a 13 year old and a twin, a 13 year old boy and twin girls. So wow. not, not too awesome. far off of yours. Yeah, that's amazing, you know, amazing. Uh, people, a lot of people have excuses, you know, but uh, you face your, you face, you face any excuse head on, you know. Uh, I shared with you earlier, my, my grandfather's blind, you know. And, uh, you know, back in those, 
the back in those days they had handicapped people do you know we you know just just uh things that own you know we, weaving baskets you know just doing some uh not important things and he's like i want to go to college you know and so he's able to go to college and then later he went to law school like yourself he went to became an attorney yes. and uh and he did that by having people read to him you know like help him read you know he was able to motivate them to read him the books you know and then when they did that they also learned and he was able to bring up the energy to right so do you have similar stories of how you got through college and through through school at my school at, at the college and it wasn't prepared for for uh, someone with all this disability in brazil we didn't have this kind of uh, today is better but back in the days it wasn't and the first school that i, I studied they accepted me very well but they only have until the fourth grade just that mm -hmm. and then we started to search for the fifth grade and all the schools that we searched they they didn't accept it, me they, they said oh no uh, we, my family heard a lot of you know bullshit like oh uh, it's gonna scare the kids or uh we don't have the resources for marcos we have just one elevator on the school and this elevator is for the principals and so it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of energy if marcos use every day the elevator look at mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. but my family had a mission for me to study like anybody in a normal school because this is you how you integrate people mixing and not you know, separating. And then uh, we, we keep uh, searching and searching. And then the school that accepted me, they realized that I was a kid like all the other kids. Mm -hmm. And when day by day, they were uh, uh, realizing that I was a, a good boy and I do everything. And since I was young, so they put me grounded like any other kid that, uh, you know, do bad stuff in school because I was... Ah uh, hell in school, <laughs> but in the and the when I graduated in the law school, <clears throat> uh, it was a building with four floors, and they didn't have an elevator or nothing to you mm -hmm. grow up, and you need to watch the a lot of speakers and lectures and. To, to get the extra hours for you to graduate. So, but I never miss one lecture because all my friends, they carry me on the stairs. They was like, you know, oh, no, you carry, no, you carry, no, because I was a little bit, a little bit overweight. So, and, but what I want to, to say to you and everybody that is listening to us, when people ask me, what is the key to success, the most powerful key to success is this, because everybody fails in life. Mm -hmm. You have failed, I fail, everybody failed. And when I ask this on the audience, on the speeches that I do, people always say, oh, I failed because I didn't have money. I failed because I didn't have time. I failed because I didn't have uh, the technology or I didn't have people and all, all of this is resources, right? And the resources is not the problem or the lack of resources. But the most powerful key to success, it's, it's like a mantra for me all my life. Mm -hmm. You need to be resourceful you need to be resourceful and you need to learn to use the resources that are around you mm -hmm. not the ones that you don't have it for me to 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 go to that school in the beginning as a child when you start to to write how does it work 
yeah. the teacher holds your hand, right? And do some drawings to your coordination, motor coordination. Mm -hmm. And what they, what they will do to me? They didn't have the expertise. So resources around us. You need to be resourceful. And so my mom, she had a brilliant and very creative idea. You know that tapes that that um, that you put on. You have in the office that 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 transparent tapes. It's like Durex, or I don't know in English. Uh, it's not a black tape, but the other one <clears throat> that is. It's like um, you can roll. And so I put the pencil on my arm and roll that tape. Oh, like a duct tape, like a duct, duct tape. Duct tape, yes, duct that's tape. the name, the duct the tape. Duct tape on your, on your, on your. On my arm. Your arm. And mm -hmm. the same way the teacher got my arm and we do the drawings to test the, the, the motor coordination. So the resources that are around us. For me to, for example, for me to play with my friends that they, they I, I love to play soccer, man, soccer. And said, what? How do you play soccer yeah. without legs? <laughs> All right. I, I, I used to have a, um, crutches, mini crutches. that was like my size. So I, mm. I, I, I sit down on the ground and I put that crutches on my arms. And then I put the arms up front and then I bend my belly and dun, 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 and then I, I run all the field and I used to, to do goals and with the resources around. They didn't have that crutches at that size. So we went to that doctor and my mom gives that, that idea again. Well, why, why we don't do this at that, this size for him? And then it worked. So I still have a big one now, but to surf, to conduct the, the surfboard. So I put that, that crutches to, to turn the, the surf right and left. And you need to do this. Otherwise, you need to be there. Stop it. And don't yeah. do nothing because you don't have the resource. So no, being no, resourceful no. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and have the, the hunger, you know, that fire inside of you until you get done. And then when you get done, you said, okay, I said I would do it and I did it. <laughs> it's the very uh, amazing sensation. It's, am it's amazing. Where, where, where do you think this fire comes from? Uh, I don't know. I think this fire comes from the, that thing of the resource around me to maintain my energy up is this is doing the things that i love it's doing the things that makes me feel happy so i think that's why i do all of this and uh everything that i love to do i do it i do it even yeah. business yeah even in today I, I on this we cannot do uh events on stadiums anymore or so we are doing a lot of live videos and i have like a bunch of students uh, online students that I, I am with them and that's my mission man and, and uh, everybody wants results in life yeah. in your personal life in your professional life and results it's nothing more than a, a simple thing it's yeah. three things preparation it's like a math okay it's a math count preparation plus opportunity mm. less your internal voice the voice of fear mm. okay so preparation you always need to learn the mm. learning never ends mm. never if you said oh no i'm already a boss i have my team i don't need to learn anymore you're you're done so you need to learn always okay because the opportunity comes from the prepared minds only only all right but you can do courses you can read books you can do trainings and the opportunity comes and then you grab that opportunity with all of your guts and then comes again 
the internal voice, the voice of fear. And then what you need to do, remember, understand that is a part of the process and to go forward and do it with little actions. And then results came every single time for you. And I use this formula on my life for all of this thing, including professionally. professionally. When I was young, my father, he used to live in the U.S. for more than 30 years. Mm. And then he came to Brazil uh, with, with my mom. And I remember he, he brought all these books and, and uh, audio cassette tapes and with all his mentors. And at that time, at that time, uh, my father's mentor was Tony Robbins. Uh, Tony Robbins, if you, people that don't know, it's the biggest trainer on the world, the planet. Yeah, yeah. And I was young with that philosophy about energy, of all those things. But for me, a kid in Brazil, to know the man, it's, it wasn't a very near place to go, right? So it's very expensive and life went on. Life went on. And in 2018, right. Tony Robbins did his first event in Brazil. And when they opened to sell the tickets, it was sold out Bam, very fast. I didn't have mine. Oh my God, I don't have my tickets. And then one day earlier, one day earlier of the event in Sao Paulo, I was doing a speech in another state. And when I was going to the airport, my manager called me and said, Marcos, listen, Tony Robbins crew, they are searching for a samba school to play the drums on stage. As you, you as a singer, and you play the drums, and you have a speech uh, that you you bring all that guys with the drums to the stage, all right? They are ready for action. Do you want to go tomorrow to Tony Robbins' stage? Listen, man, preparation. I was prepared. 21 years playing the drums. Mm -hmm. Plus opportunity. The opportunity came. All right? Okay, grab it. I said, okay. And then... The voice of fear. Oh my God, it's Tony Robbins, but it's 11,000 people on the crowd. Oh, oh what am I going to do? And I remember that Tony, he loves the music, Brazilian music that is called Acarela do Brasil. Mm. And the lyrics, it's like one mile away of lyrics and doesn't repeat nothing. It's like you sing, 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 chorus, sing, 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 chorus. No, no, it's everything different and I didn't sing that song I said wow I need to record on my mind in 24 hours and I said all right you can count on me and then on the next day I was on stage on the event of the guy that changed my life I said whoa and in the end I, I entered on the the backstage and I entered on Tony were on the green room and then face to face to him, he's big, man. He's very big. The yeah. first thing he do, he did, he, he got on his knees in front of me and I said, get up, man, please. And he said, everybody's equal. Look at me in the eyes. And he said, he put his very big hand on my chest boom, and said, you have a very big mission and beautiful mission. And you will help a lot of people in this world. I want to give you a gift. And I said, what? If his story was ended on the stage, for me, it was very cool. But now I was front, front to, them, to him, and he said that. And I said, okay. And he said, I want you to go as my personal guest on Date with Destiny. His mm -hmm. training of six days in the U.S. Wow. It's like $7,000. And I said, wow. whoa. And he gave to me. All right. On that time for the trip, my wife, she was impossible to, to go with me. And I said, oh, my God. Because I do a lot of stuff, but some things I need help. Of course. Like food, like bathroom, and, you know, and, and, and take your clothes off. And, of course. And I said, wow. Any other person, maybe, they had to give up. So said, oh, no. All right, no. 
It's not for me. I would not ask for someone to do this. But remember, you need to be resourceful, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes the resources around you are your friends. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. So I ask, I call a friend of mine. It's a very important speaker in Brazil too. And I say, listen, man, uh, who would you like to go with me to Tony events? And it's a gift for you. But listen, you have to be my nanny. <laughs> and he said, okay, man, I love you. And let's do this together. And, and boom. So on that sixth day of the event, on the last day, Tony invited me to share. He said, who wants to share? And listen, man, no arms, no legs. And I put my arms up like this, you know. I, and even in a restaurant, <laughs> nobody see when I do this. Tony yeah. Robbins will see from the stage. Of course not. But when you want something, you need to do little actions, okay? So me and my friend, we said, okay, uh, let's go up front. And then I, I pick up my wheelchair and bang to the first row. And on the first row, we started to talk to all that guys that are platinum guests or something. The guys that paid something like $87,000 to be yeah. there. I wasn't a platinum, but I bring my wheelchair from home. So I see it whenever I want. So <laughs> I, I was staying over there on the, on the aisle and on the first row. And then we started to talk to that guys. And my friend said, listen, let's help Marcos to share. And when Tony was, who wants to share? Everybody was like pointing me. He, 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 he. And then he said, I want to invite my Brazilian friend. And then, oh, he remembered me. And then I shared something that I would like to share with you all. That is changing my way of seeing life. Everybody, every one of us, we have a primary question. It's an unconscious question that filters your life. Every decision you make, that primary question shows up on your mind. For some, and, and some people, your primary question sometimes uh, push you to the success and sometimes drags you down. Mm. Some people have like a primary questions like, oh, am I good enough? There's people that always think about that. Am I good enough? Am I good enough? And don't do nothing and give up. And so some people have a primary question like, uh, what do I need to do for people like me more? What do I need to do for people like me? So all the time they want to please the others. And sometimes herself or himself, it's, way back, <laughs> far away. So everybody has yours and I discovered mine. And I said, listen, Tony, I think the great breakthrough that I had here, it was when I was born. The medicals told me that I would live only 30 years of life, just that. And my primary question was, how can I enjoy life with the little time that I have, 30 years? That's why I did so many impossible things for someone in my condition. Because every single day, unconsciously, that question appears. How can I enjoy life with the little time that I have? And then Tony looked at me and said, how old are you now? And I said, I'm 36. And then all the crowd, man, all the crowd was like, ah. and that DJ his DJ is very good, and he's always put musics that are uh, aligned with the subject. Mm -hmm. And then he started to play that song. Tonight we are young, so I set the world on fire. Wow, man, everybody was crying, and I was crying, Tony was crying. And then he hugged me and said, I want to give you a gift. Again, man. And I said, what? I want you to learn what we do here and help people in Brazil. Mm. And then he gave me a full formation, all his courses. And then since 2018, I am traveling to US and learning and learning and learning. And now 
I am leadership master on Tony Robbins' crew. I work with them. I help on the events. And I help a lot of people with all this knowledge and my life stories and things like that. But if you ask me, is there any time that you think about or thought about uh, uh, giving up? Yeah. yeah. On that time, <clears throat> when Tony gave me this, you know, mission, my biggest fear on 2018 was to be on this online world, right? I said, mm -hmm. oh my God, how can I do this? Because people that know me know that I only do speeches and lectures in companies, mm. not a, a, an open event that people can buy tickets and go in. Right. So right. how can I help these people? People that are inside their houses, people that don't have any financial conditions to take a plane to US to see an event like that or something like that. And then I said, okay, the fear is part of the process and let's go even with fear. And then I, I created a program of 30 days with uh, every single day I have a students on WhatsApp group and I put some message for them. And once a week we have classes, classes with slideshows and the music and all of this. But what my point here is my first class, I have four students only, four. Mm. Any other trainer, any other uh, uh, speaker maybe may think like, oh, this is not for me. I'll do my speeches on companies and I, I earn my money over there, but it, this is not for money. This is mission. And there is one thing that I learned in all my life, and I want you, everybody that is listening to us, to write down this. The mission is always bigger than the pain. The mission is always bigger than the pain. So I go on and go on and go on. And today, I am going to my uh, uh, the 14th edition of my course 14 classes i have graduated and i have students all around i have students in japan switzerland uh, and portugal uh, us and all brazil all brazil because i didn't give up so you can do this if i did all of this without arms and legs yeah. you can do even more even more but it's a question of choice. You need to choose very well and wisely because your destiny, it's made by your decision. It's yeah. your decisions, not your conditions that change your life. Yeah. Did you ever feel like giving up? You know, I mean, you got rejected Just by- Just that, by, that by first the, time. Got rejected by the girl, you know? But I, I, that was the only time. Is there any uh, any low low times that? Uh... Oh yeah, life you have always have low times. But um, when you when you um, learn the tools, all right, the strategies and your state, how to change your state, mm. the things get easier. It's like a gym. You know that you are a fighter. Mm -hmm. So you train, you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. You cannot expect a life without pain. Right. It doesn't exist. Because our society sells that you need to be free of your pain very right. fast with medicines and stuff like that. Speaking it of, like this. Yeah. Speaking of pain, I heard that you're always in pain. You always have pain. Your body yes. is always in pain. But you never complain the the your friends that 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 I know that you never complain um what what is your mindset with dealing with that yes or uh, uh, just for you guys understand that why is that pain off because when i was 15 years old i suffered for a disease 
that is called scoliosis. Mm -hmm. When your spine, it turns, turns, turns like a letter S, you know? Mm -hmm. And at that time, my spine was uh, turning like 10 degrees per month. It's a hell. So we went to the doctor and they said, listen, you need to, we need to do the surgery right now. Otherwise, it's going to perforate some organ and the kid will die. Mm. But even still, if you want to do the surgery, there is 90 percent, 90 of going wrong. Because I have a small body. I cannot lose too much blood. And they will put an iron bar inside me from my the shoulders to the hip. So for iron, the, an iron rod, an iron rod. On yeah, the, iron rod. Mm -hmm. Yes, and 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 this is is it's like uh, for the your spine doesn't turn right. again. Right. Okay. Ten percent is better than nothing. <laughs> and okay, we 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 did uh, the surgery, but when I woke up, I couldn't bend my my body again. Oh, from the hip up, I couldn't I, I couldn't uh, fold and bend, you know, and like do this this kind of movement. Uh, and what is the most necessary movement for you to use the crutches mm. or do your movement? Is your to move your spine? Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I said, I am screwed now. I love to do a lot of things to play with my friends, to use the crutches, to play soccer, to do, go to the beach. And now I cannot do nothing. From that day back, I can do anything. From, from that day now, I cannot do nothing more. But remember, to be happy, mm -hmm. it's a decision. Mm -hmm. And you need to be resourceful. And so I thought like that. Well, I always searched for things that put me on that state. So I will search more for new things. And all of these things that I said to you, drummer, DJ, singer, yeah. well, play yeah. the drums, all of this appears after the surgery. Mm. Yeah, so go. you need to decide this. And the pain is because even with the, this thing on my spine, Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm like stretch it right now mm -hmm. and I spend too many hours sit down on the wheelchair, too many hours. And then the pain and the pain and the pain, but I never complain. You always will see me with a smile on my face because there's one thing that I carry all the time with me and that is called gratitude, mm -hmm. gratitude. Mm -hmm. Today, I am thankful to being born in this body. I am thankful because I know the size of the mission that God, the universe, or whatever you believe, gave to me. So it's a decision, and you need to think about what I'm doing right now, what I'm doing to take my life to the next level. Mm -hmm all my relationships to the next level or my business to the next level. Because Marcus, what, what, is, what is the, so I don't mean to interrupt you, excuse me. Uh, what is, what is your, what is your, what is the mission? What is your mission? Cause we spoke, you said it a few times. Yes. My mission it's to help a more and more and more and more people to achieve them to their, achieve their goals in life. So remember the primary question, mm. okay? Uh, we learned that that was our old primary question. And then we set a new one. So my old primary question was, how can I enjoy life with the little time that I have? Mm -hmm. And the new primary question for me to go on all my life now, it's how can I enjoy even more life and being grateful what I have, help people to get to their goals and dreams. So that's my new primary question. So if you have a bad primary question, you need to learn and 
and change that for the future. You know, my background's in jujitsu, right? And martial arts. And we always have a group and a team. And I always, I always go back to that, you know, tapping into something bigger than yourself elevates, elevates you, really makes you, you know, I mean, talk, we talk about energy. It just, I mean, what's one thing for ourselves, but when we tap into that bigger, something that's bigger than ourselves, right? It elevates our, our, our energy, you know? Um, yes. is that, you think that's the case with, with finding your mission, your life's mission? Yes, because being is given. Being is given. So you need to change your focus for yourself to the others, to the people you love, or even the people you don't know. But I know that you know something that I don't know, mm -hmm. that you can teach me something. You can help people with something. So that's the spirit. Change your focus. Because people are with depression, people are um, sad and, and with anxiety because they are focused on the past, with right. people with depression. They are trapped on that stories, that old stories, mm -hmm. and that they are depressed. And people with anxiety, they are only on the future, only on the future, only on the future, and people forget about the present. The, the present. present that you are living now. Every single day matters. Every single day. And complaining will not take you to anywhere. And I need to say, tell you something. Yeah, uh, people complain. People complain because all the human beings, all of them, including me, you, and everybody you know, all the human beings search to attend for six human needs. Six, just that. Okay? And the only difference in me, over to Crane, and everybody you know, the only difference is how do you put uh, the preference you put on that six needs. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of them, one of them, it's called connection. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are human beings and we need to connect to someone or some cause or something. Okay. And people that complain a lot. That people, the, the, the person, they have the connection at first or second, but it's a top level, okay? But why they complain? They complain because they need to feel connected. They need to, oh, they receive that love because, oh, so they complain, complain, complain to get connection. Mm -hmm. But when they complain, the other one, the people that is hearing, it's supposed to be hearing, Complain more than <laughs> it's oh no, you need to see my house, oh my family, my problem, whatever. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> it get only worse. So I will say two things for you that maybe you will not be very happy to hear, but I will say anyway, because it's my job. Okay. Listen, you don't have problems. You don't have problems. You wake up every morning, you step on the ground, you look to the sun rise, mm -hmm. even that we are looking on the window right now, but yeah. you still look to the sun rising. You don't need anyone to feed you. You don't need anyone to put clothes on you. You don't need anyone to get you to the bathroom till you do your, your, your needs. What you have in your life, it's not problems is situations mm -hmm. and all of them can be solved all of them okay the second thing that i need to say to you is no one <laughs> no one gives a beep about your problems mm -hmm. no one i'm not saying that no one loves you i'm not saying that one that no one uh, uh, cares about you but why, why I am saying that everybody has his own situations. So complaining will not leave you to anywhere. Mm -hmm. So stop complaining and do your best. Mm -hmm. I have a store in, in, uh, with, I have a brand with all, with t-shirts and all things 
that I do because I, I love to do drawings with even with my bare hands. <laughs> and and one of the sell most in US, it's written stop bitching <laughs> in my signature. <laughs> it's nice. very amazing. Right. <laughs> I'll send you the link later. Yeah, yeah I'd love to see it. Hilarious. You, you know, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and finish the the, uh, the other the list, the numbers. You're on number that the six, the six needs. No, no, it's just that because uh, because it's it's one of them is that okay. Yeah. So that's why people complain. We are we're talking about com complaining. So yeah. and the, the, oh, you want to know about the six human needs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> need. Oh, oh, listen, man. I have. I'm starting on uh, next um, month the the 14th grade of my class. And I would love to be you as my student. If you want to, uh, you are my personal guest. Right. Of that. It's going to be awesome. I, I think yeah, it will inspire a lot of students over there too, man. Yeah. You know, I want to I wanna go back to uh, your, your childhood because I'm always, I, I study a lot of neuroscience things and the brain and, you yes. know, just human potential things. If martial arts was my way to find my way. Um, but, uh, I think of you and like, I'm listening to you talk and, you know, your dad brought home Tony Robbins and all these motivational books and having, uh, you know, special needs, you know, you know, special needs, you, there's no special needs with you, special needs, uh, boy, you know, little boy, you know, how he, he made you, he, they your parents, they hardwired you like this success, you know, and, uh, you're able to help other people reach their potential, their, their success, you know? So yes. what kind of books, what kind of things did your father, because you said your father many times, what kind of things, what kind of books, information did he give you? According to the ages, right? But he's always, because we didn't have translations mm. in Portuguese at that time. So he used to read them and translate for me what he learned so it wasn't like reading all the full book or something like right. that but right. he passed me what he was learning and <clears throat> steps of the giant and <clears throat> a lot of his mentors of that time jim ron and mm. he helped me a lot but i was a young kid just listen to my dad and let's do this it works yeah. And then it started to work. And then I entered again on that cycle of success. Yeah. And I did. You remember, I you remember, his, you remember the sayings, you remember the <clears throat> things he was subconsciously, you know, uh, you know, building, building those circuits, right. Of uh, you going one way or going the other way, but you going the right way because you have a, you could have a million excuses not yes. to do anything and to feel sad. But instead, all I see with you is a big smile and just so many achievements and, and, and really making the world a better place. So I can't, I can't help. Yeah. I can't help, but think about some of the, so different, different, different books and different, for different ages. Right. Could, could you tell me uh, some of the books that uh, he would, he would read to you? One of them that really changed my life on this path of purpose and mission when I literally decided to help people was called the secret mm. about the law of attraction. It was about 14 years ago. I remember at that, that stage of my life, I was a young man. And my biggest fear at that time was the, the, the fear of uh, public speaking. Mm. Okay, so my mission was: I want to be a speaker. How in the world I would do this mm -hmm. if I have a fear of speaking? So I remembered that they had some on that book. We have some steps, three steps you can do in your home, in your life, and everything. The first one was you need to think okay think about what you want it's like a, a, a mentalization you because our brain 
we, we, we have this ability to create mental images. Okay, if I say to you right now, think about a red rose, boom, it's there. Right. If I said to you, <clears throat> don't think about a red rose, it's still there. Your brain doesn't know what is true or not. So the first step you think, don't, you need to think, <clears throat> you need to think about your goal, but you need to imagine the right time, the situation, the right moment of the achieving. The moment that you are achieving your goal, okay? You close your eyes and you do this for five, 10 minutes a day. Mm. In the morning, if you, if you can do it when you wake up, boom. Why is that? When you do this, even that it's only a, a little film in your mind, mm. you start to turn on the second stage that is feel. Okay, so you think, then you feel, because when you are on that uh, image in your head about your goal being achieved, right? Even inside your head, you feel that gratitude. You feel that, oh, it's amazing. I did it, even that it's inside of your head. And then you feel grateful. You, that's the connection to the universe. And then, you need to turn on the third step, that mm. is act. You need to put action. Act, and the, the most important thing is act as is already happened. Mm. For example, I wanted to be a speaker. Biggest fear, talk in public. So I started to close my eyes and imagine I'm on stage and the crowd and people uh, uh, talking to me, oh, it helped me some way. And then I started to feel that gratitude for helping people to fulfill my mission, even inside my head. And then I started to act, action, day by day, little actions. So I start to write down my, all the things that I would like to talk on my speech. Everything's like, good morning, it's a pleasure to be here, blah, 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 blah. I started to do the, the slides on PowerPoint and I, the slides, awful slides at that time, but I started anyway, okay? And then I started to do rehearsal at home. My wife said, wow, are you crazy? Are you talking alone? No, I am rehearsing for my speech. I didn't have anyone, but I was doing, acting like it already happened. Mm -hmm. I started to do uh, the business card, Marcus Rossi, speaker. I didn't have any speaker, but I already had the, the card, right? Action, action, action all the time. All my life I did this. So when I read the book, I said, I'll do this again. And then I started to do the things. And you know, I started to do speeches because all my life, all my life, since I was a kid, people always said to me, oh, you are an example. Oh, you, you helped me to do this and that. And oh, just seeing you inspires me, your inspiration and then, but for me, I just, I just live my life. Why people don't live theirs? Yeah. I just do and what I want to do and be happy. And then one day, oh, anyway, I, I do a lot of this and my, on my free hours, I still have a full job in the international bank. So uh, I was at the bank on the, uh, on the lunchtime and a guy shows up and we were uh, lunching. Um, and then he said, I, I didn't know that guy yet. He just looked at me and said, listen, Marcos, uh, are you still, uh, uh, showing up on the magazine of the bank. They have an internal magazine. And mm. I, I did a lot of, of, of um, uh, how do you say it in English? Uh, materials. Uh, material. A lot of, yes, a lot of material for them. And <clears throat> and then I said, no, no, I stopped. For, it was, I, I did that years ago, but now I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. And he said, I want to say something to you. At that time, 
when the the bank magazine uh, was released. We were living in a very bad situation at my home. My mom and dad always go into a physical fight. And my brothers, they doesn't want to work. It's like hell at home. And I pick up five examples of the magazine mm -hmm. and brought home and I asked them for a meeting and I shared them one of, of the magazine for one of them. And, and I said, listen, what are you doing with your life? And then, and I, I just was, I listened to the guy, you know, and chewing my food and, and he said, from that night on, today, my father uh, and mom and dad decided to split. That is the best thing to do. All my brothers, they are working. It's good in business. And we bought uh, an apartment together oh. because of that night. And you don't know what do you do to people, even without doing nothing, just being yourself. Why don't you do this professionally? Oh. And I said, wow, I said, that guy with that story and on my table, universe talk to you all the time. God send you message all the time mm -hmm. to people, to music, to something, situations that happen. And I said, wow, okay, I want to do this. I'm reading a book. And I said to them, I'm reading a book that is the secret. And as we started to talking about this, but I am afraid. I'm still I'm afraid to public speaking. On law school, I run for all the, the presentations to do on front. I killed all my family, you know. Oh, no, my great dad is dead. I, knew, I cannot go today. And, and he said, to do a speech, to do a lecture, it's easy. It's like being a teacher. Said, okay, but I'm not a teacher. No, I am a teacher in my free hour. So I can help you. So we started to get lunch together every single day. And with a, a record on the table, a tape record on the table, he taped all my stories, all my things. And then uh, we wrote together uh, a script mm. and started to do, it's like an interview. You know, mm. he, he asked the question and I answered the question. And seven months doing this, uh, his wife got pregnant. And he said, man, I have to go. And I said, what? No, how can I do this alone? And who's gonna ask the questions? Mm. And he said, listen, you know the answers, right? So delete the questions and just do it. <laughs> and he meant the answers. And then, and then I started to go by myself and here I am. What, what I want to say is this. Sometimes in life, uh, things happen that we are not expecting. Things mm -hmm. happen that change the course of your life. And you get, you know, it's like a, almost like, like a knockout. You get dizzy and you know oh, what I do now. But you need to understand that life is always happening for you and not to you against you for you and not to you every time that you complain and say why this is happening with me no it's not with you it's for you mm -hmm. it's a gift so what do you need to do okay. think and ask yourself for how can i do my best mm -hmm. how can i do my best how can i do more in these situations what is the teaching here mm -hmm. then your life your life starts to change that's it. Uh, just to finish up, I, you know, uh, Todd, she brought this book, your book, you know? Uh, yeah, this is in Portuguese. <laughs> yeah. I have it in English, man. I, it's what's, on Amazon. Okay. It's, on, it's got, yeah. uh, you know, what's, what's impossible for you? Yeah, what's impossible for you? You know, and then on the back it says, uh, believe nothing is impossible for you. 
it says in the back. I noticed that right away, you know, believe nothing is impossible for you. Um, you know, I, I uh, <laughs> you're an example, you're a living example of that, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, you know, there's a million excuses, right? We can all have, you know, uh, there's, there's a billion excuses you could have, uh, but uh, you don't, you don't believe any of them and you go for it, you know? And so you're such an example. And I mean, beyond motivating um, family, kids, working at the bank, international bank, motivational speaker, Tony Robbins. Uh, I mean, you know, music, you, you're a, you, I saw a show that you did, uh, you know, you're a singer, you know, a uh, comedian, right? You're a comedian yeah. as well. You're doing just, I mean, so many things, you know? Uh, so, so, I mean, it's amazing, you know, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for sharing your thank story. You. And, uh, I hope to hopefully one day, uh, meet you in person, uh, hope here in the U S or in Brazil, you live in. Yes, some it will be an honor, man. And I hope to, to see one of your fights. <laughs> it's in the, it's in the past, the, the fights, the professional fights, maybe jujitsu matches. Yeah. I love to. <laughs> And maybe we, we can go on the mat and we can do some jujitsu. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do Have this. You done <laughs> Have you done jujitsu yet? No, not yet. Okay. So I'll, I'll do a choke on you and you can, you can, uh, we figure it out. <laughs> Nothing is impossible, right? I can, I can bite the kimono. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a way. There's always a way. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank Mark. you. God bless you, man. God bless you.